viewers at home, you are welcome to the part two of my presentation on bankruptcy account. Bankruptcy account. In this part two, I am going to consider the preparation of one deficiency account deficiency account and statement of affairs in bankruptcy statement of affairs so if this is the first time of you coming across this youtube channel or if you have not subscribed in the past please click the red subscribe button and also turn on the notification bell icon so that you don't miss my upcoming videos if you are a returning subscriber i say thank you and god bless you i am starting with deficiency account what is deficiency account deficiency account is the account that shows how the deficiency or surplus have arisen. Deficiency account. Deficiency account. This is the account. Account that shows that shows how the deficiency deficiency or surplus have arisen an account that shows how the deficiency or surplus or deficiencies or surpluses have arisen that account is said to be the deficiency account. The deficiency account contain those items that reduce the deficiency. There are two items that are normally contained in deficiency account. Number one, we have items reducing deficiency. And number two is items contributing to the deficiency. These are the two items that are usually recorded in the deficiency account. Items that are reducing the deficiency and items that are contributing to the deficiency. These are the two items that are normally recorded in the deficiency account. Item reducing deficiency. They are the item that will make the deficiency of the entity to reduce. Items that will make the deficiency or losses of the bankrupt to reduce. Items that will make the deficiency or losses of the bankrupt to reduce. Those items are said to be the items that are reducing the deficiency. Then, on the other hand, we have items contributing to the deficiency. By items contributing to the deficiency, we mean the items that will make the deficiency of the bankrupt to increase. Items that will make the deficiency of the bankrupt or the losses of the bankrupt to, uh, to increase. They are the items contributing to deficiency. I repeat, I say items contributing to the deficiency. I say they are the items that will make the deficiency or the losses of the bankrupt to increase. Items that will make or items that will make the deficiency or losses of the bankrupt to increase. They are said to be the items contributing to deficiency. These are usually losses. 
Why I check reducing the deficiency are usually profit. This one are usually profit. In most cases, this one, they are usually losses or expenses. Now, there are two sides to the bank uh, to deficiency account. We have the left hand side. Left hand left hand side and the right hand right hand side these are the two sides to deficiency account at the left hand side we have items items reducing the deficiency items reducing the deficiency. They are the items that will be contained at the left hand side of the deficiency account. Deficiency account. And at the right hand side, we have items contributing. Items contributing to deficiency. Remember, I've told you that by items contributing to deficiency, I said they are the items that will make the deficiency of the bankrupt. Items that will make the deficiency or the losses of the bankrupt to increase. They are said to be the items contributing to deficiency. Why items that will make the, the deficiency of the bankrupt to increase? They are, I mean to reduce. They are said to be the items Reducing the deficiency. And I want to know in part one, I said a bankrupt is a person against whom bankruptcy pe uh, petition has been presented. A person against whom bankruptcy petition is presented is said to be the bankrupt. Now, what are the items that can lead to the reduction? In the losses or the deficiency. Now we have capital. Number one, we have capital. That is our excess of assets over liabilities. Excess of assets over liabilities. Where you are not given the capital. So you are going to use the open entry. You add up all the assets. In the opening entry, you less all the liabilities in the opening entry. That will give you the capital, just like your normal statement of affairs under incomplete records. Now, capital or excess of assets over liabilities. Then we have profits or gains. Number one is capital asset. Number two, we have profits. Profits or gains. Under this. So we may have profit from trade or business. Profit, know when the business may profit. So the losses or the deficiency of the entity of that bankrupt will reduce as a result of the profit they have made. We have profit from trade, profit from trade or business. Profit from trade or business. Number two, you have profit from sales or PPE. Profit from sales of PPE. This will be obtained by subtracting the carry amount of the PPE from the realizable, realizable value. Realizable value of the PPE minus the carry amount of the PPE. That is, minus the net value of the PPE. Then we may also have the profit from other assets. We also have profit from sales of investment. It will lead to reduction in deficiency or losses. We have investment income. Investment income. 
Then we also have uh, number three. We have the realizable value of personal assets. Realizable value of personal assets. Then we also have deficiency as per statement of affairs. Deficiency as per statement of affairs. These are the items that can be found at the debit side, that is at the left hand side of the deficiency account. On the right hand side, we have items contributing to deficiency. I've told you that these are items that will make the deficiency or losses of the bankrupt to, to increase. And I've told you that these are usually losses. So these items include excess of liabilities. The first one we have excess of liabilities over assets. Remember at the left hand side I said excess of assets over liabilities. But this one is excess of liability over assets. Then we also have losses or expenses. Losses or expenses. This include trading losses. Trading losses. That is losses from trade or business where the business incur losses or where there are accumulation of losses the deficiency or losses of the bankrupt will increase then we have loss from sales of PPE loss from sales from sales of PPE where the kind amount of the PPE exceed the realizable value of the PPE we have losses from sales of PPE where the carrying amount of the PPE exceed the realizable value of the PPE. We also have loss from sales of investment. Loss from sales of investment, that is, where the carrying amount of the investment exceed the realizable value of the investment. We also have bad debts. Bad debts. Written off, bad debts will contribute to the deficiency of the bankrupt. We also have loss from other assets. Loss from other assets, such as inventory, where the kind amount of the inventory exceeds the realizable value of the inventory. Then we also have expenditure such as research and development expenses development expenses written off written off research and development expenses written off so you may also have drawings amount it may be a form of goods or cash withdrawn by the bankrupt for personal use. The interest on loans or overdraft. Interest on loans or overdraft. Where the bankrupt borrows loan and the bankrupt pays interest on such loans, it will contribute to the deficiency of the bankrupt. That is, it will make the deficiency of the bankrupt to increase. Expenses of the liquidator or liquidator expenses. Liquidator expenses. So, these are the items that usually contribute 
to the deficiency of the bankrupt. So this, these are the items that you can have in the deficiency account. The second account I'm going to examine is the statement of affairs. Statement of affairs. Remember I told you that we have statement of affairs. I'm told that a bankrupt is a person against whom bankruptcy petition is presented. Therefore, a statement of affairs is a statement that shows the financial position of the bankrupt. This is a statement. This is a statement that shows the financial the financial position of the bankrupt of the bankrupt i told you that the bankrupt i say is the debtor against whom bankruptcy petition is presented bankrupt that is the debtor against whom bankruptcy petition is presented Statement of affairs is a statement that shows the financial position of the bankrupt as at the date, as at the date, the receiving order, the receiving order is passed on him, that is, is passed on the debtor by the court. It's only the court that can certify a debtor bankrupt. It's only the court that can certify a debtor bankrupt. So, a statement that shows the financial position of the bankrupt as at the date the receiving order is passed on him by the court. That statement is said to be the statement of affairs. So, if you have watched the part one of this presentation, I've considered the difference between the statement of affairs prepared in bankruptcy account and the statement of financial position you prepare in financial accounting. So, now, let me consider classes of creditors classes of creditors you may have in bankruptcy so we are going to categorize creditors into two we have secured creditors secured creditors and unsecured unsecured creditors a secure creditor secure creditors are creditors that is having lien on the asset of the bankrupt. Creditors that are having lien on the asset of the bankrupt are said to be secured. That is, the asset of the bankrupt are used as collateral security. The assets of the bankrupt are used as collateral for such loans. Where the asset of the bankrupt, where the specific asset, where the specific asset of the bankrupt are used as a lien, that is, are used as collateral for such loans, we regard those class of creditors as secured. On the other hand, unsecured creditors are creditors that does not have lien on a specific asset of the bankrupt. That is, the asset of the bankrupt are not used as collateral for this class of creditors. The asset of the bankrupt are not used as collateral. Examples of unsecured creditors. 
examples of unsecured creditors include number one we have trade payables trade payables they also have bills payables we have accrued expenses accrued expenses we have the bank overdraft bank overdraft these are some of the examples of unsecured creditors we have trade payables bills payables accrued expenses and bank overdraft so we have many other these are some of the examples of unsecured creditors secure creditors can be categorized into two we have the fully secured creditors fully secured creditors and publicly secured creditors publicly secured creditors when the value of the assets used as collateral the value of the assets used as collateral is greater than or equal to the value of the loans if it is greater the value of the assets used as collateral is greater than or equal to the value of the loans such class of creditors are said to be fully secured for instance if the value of the asset is ten thousand dollar and the value of the loans is nine thousand dollar the creditor is said to be fully secured the value of the loan is lower than the value of the asset used as collateral. Or if the value of the asset used as collateral is $10,000 and the value of the loan is also $10,000, this class of creditors are said to be fully secured. The value of the asset used as collateral must be greater than or equal to the value of the loans for a fully secured creditors but for partly secure creditors partly secure creditor the value of the asset used as collateral is less than the value of the loans the value of the asset used as collateral is less than the value of the loans for instance if the value of the asset used as collateral is 10000 and the value of the loans is $12,000. So this creditor is said to be partly secured. If the value of the collateral is 10000 uh, is 10,000 and the value of the loan is $20,000, the creditor is said to be secured in part. That is partly secured. Aside the secured creditors and unsecured creditors. We have other class of creditors. Other classes of creditors. Other classes of creditors include number one, preferential. Creditors. Preferential creditors, these are creditors. These are creditors with priority right, with priority right to payment. Creditors with priority right to payment upon bankruptcy upon bank robbery. Preferential creditors, I said they are the creditors. 
with priority rights to payment upon bankruptcy. There are creditors that must be paid before any others. The preferential creditors, they are creditors that must, must be paid before any other. Before any other creditors are paid, preferential creditors must be paid first. They are the creditors with preferential treatment. That is, they have priority rights to payment before uh, priority right to payment upon bankruptcy. That is, they must be paid first before any other classes of creditors will be paid. So preferential creditors include the unpaid wages and salaries. Unpaid wages and salaries of employees. Unpaid wages and salaries of employees. 12 months, I uh, mean 4 months prior to the date of the receiving order. Unpaid wages and salaries of employees. 4 months prior to the date of the receiving order. Meaning that any unpaid wages and salaries whose payment period exceeded four months, those ones will be ranked as unsecured creditors. They will also have taxes, taxes or tenement rate, tenement rate due to government. The taxes and tenement rate due to government, 12 months prior to the date of receiving order. That means any outstanding or accumulation of taxes whose payment period exceeded 12 months to the date of receiving order, those one will be ranked as unsecured creditors. Number two, I have deferred, deferred uh, creditors. Deferred creditors, these are, uh, these are the creditors whose claim, I mean, the claim of this class of creditors can only be paid after unsecured creditors have been paid. The claims, the claims, of this class of creditors can only be paid, can only be paid after unsecured creditors have been paid. The claims of this class of creditors can only be made can only be made after unsecured creditors have been paid. Examples of different creditors are some borrowed by the married man or woman from his husband or wife. Uh, for the purpose of the business. Money borrowed. Money borrowed. By the married man or woman from from his husband or wife for the purpose for the purpose of trade or business this will be ranked as deferred
creditors, deferred creditors. Having considered the classes of creditors, so on bankruptcy, I therefore want to consider the format for preparing the statement of affairs. Format for preparing statement of affairs. So now let us assume you have Mr. Debtor. Mr. Debtor. As the name of the bankrupt. Then you have statement of affairs as at the date will be specified. You have the left hand side. You have two sides. The left hand side and the right hand side. At the right hand side you have the book value book value the estimated to realize estimated estimated to realize and at the debit side that is the left hand side You can as well have expected to rank. Expected to rank. Then details or particulars. Then you have gross liability. The amount which is in dollar. At the left hand side, the first class of debtor is unsecured. I mean, the first class of creditors. We have unsecured creditors. You put that amount under expected to rank. Then the same amount you have it as under gross liability. After unsecured creditors, then you have fully secured. Creditors. Fully secure creditors. Under the fully secure creditor, you have the realizable value of the security. Realizable value. Value of security. Realizable value of security, you put that here. Then, uh, Estimate, I mean, the mortgage loan, the actual value of the loan, in which this was used as a security. So, the mortgage loan, then you have surplus, surplus in the hands of secured creditors, partly secured creditors, partly secured creditors. We have the realizable value of security. Then value of the loan. Since the value of the loan will be greater than the realizable value of the security for a partly secured creditors. You are going to rank the amount by which the loan exceed the value of, the realizable value of the security as an unsecured creditors. So that will be ranked in pari passu with the unsecured creditors. So the loan, the value of the loan, you are going to have it under gross liability. The next thing is the contingency, contingency, and bankruptcy cost, bankruptcy cost, not previously provided. So you have that under 
your gross liability, then you also rank it with unsecured creditors. Then we also have deferred creditors. Deferred creditors. So you have it under gross liability, then you rank it with unsecured creditor. Then you have preferential, preferential creditors. So this, you only state it here. You don't need to rank it with unsecured creditor. Then you have it under current liability. So that is for that. At the right hand side, you are going to have the assets that are not pledged, assets that are not used as collateral. Those assets that were not used as collateral, so like cash in hands, cash in hands, the book value, the estimated realizable value, then we also have. Uh, Inventories, inventories or stocks, the book value of the inventory and the realizable value. Then you have receivables or debtors. So those ones that are good, book value, the realizable value, the doubtful debt, doubtful, then you have the book value and the realizable value. Then we as well have bad debts. The book value, but then we not have any realizable value. Then we have stocks and shares. Stocks and shares. The book value and the realizable value. Then we have life insurance policy. The book value and the realizable value. Then we have personal assets. Personal assets of the of the bankrupt. So the realizable value of personal assets of the bankrupt. So then other assets not used not used as collateral. Where you have asset like motor vehicles. If they are not used as collateral, so you have the book value, you have the realizable value. Uh, plant and machinery, features and fittings, land and building, any asset that are not used as collateral, so you have them there. Remember, those ones that have been used as collateral, those ones will have been considered here. That is for fully secure creditors. And for partly secure creditors. So we are only considering those assets that are not used as collateral here. So when you sum up this, the realizable value is total this. Then remember for fully secure creditors here, you have surplus, certain amount of surplus in hands of the fully secure creditor. The amount you have here, you are going to add it. Surplus. in hand of fully secured creditors. You add a surplus in hands of fully secured creditors. So you have this as the total after that has been added. Then you now consider your preferential creditors. You know you only state it here. You didn't rank it with unsecured creditors. So the amount you have as your preferential creditors. So you are going to deduct that now. You list your preferential creditors. Preferential creditors. So when you list that, you have this as your balance. So you now compare this with the total of the left hand side. That is your unsecured creditors, the balance you have after deducting the public secure creditor from the realizable value, the contingent liabilities, the different liabilities, 
So when you sum up all this, you have this as the total. So the total of the left hand side, you now subtract this one from the total of the left hand side. Then you have the deficiency. Deficiency in the statement of affairs. So, but where the credit side, that is the right hand side, where it exceeds the left hand side, you have the surplus here. So, that is deficiency, that is statement of affairs. This is the format for preparing statement of affairs. Now, I want to consider a work example. A receiving order was made against Mr. Felele on 31st December 22X. Assets and liability reviewed the following. You have the liabilities, then you have the assets. The book value of the assets and the estimated realizable value of the assets is equally given. The, the liabilities include the payables of 2,300, bank overdraft of 520, Loan secured by mortgage on building, that is 1,000. Then we have capital of 295. Then the asset side, you have receivables of 1,500, being the book value, with the realizable value of 1,200. Inventories of 410, the book value, the realizable value of inventory is 300. Cash of 25, for book value and the realizable value respectively. Building of 1,560 as the book value with the realizable value of 1,100. Goodwill with the book value of 520, realizable value of goodwill is nil. Patent, the book value is 100, the realizable value is 230. The total is 4,115. Of the payable, of the payables, 360 are preferential. The back overdraft has no security. The capital of Mr. Felele three years ago was $1,000. His losses for the last two years being 705 Naira. And the profit for the year amounts to 700 Naira. His drawings over the period of three years amounted to 700 naira. You are required to A. Prepare statement of affairs B. Prepare deficiency account. If you look at the capital here, we have 295. In the additional information, you were told that the capital of Mr. Felele three years ago was 1,000 Naira, his losses for the last two years be 705. This capital is the difference between the 1,000 three years ago minus losses of 705. That is how they arrive at the 295. So in case I didn't consider the 295, so I may use the amount in the additional information. Correction. The total of the book value of the asset is 4,115. While the total of the realizable value of the asset is 2,855. Now, let's have the solution. Now, working one. Or as part of our working, let's have the analysis of creditors let's go through the liabilities we have the payables then we have the bank overdraft we have loan secured that's to show that this is secured loan secured by mortgage on building the value of the loans is 1000 no building was used as collateral for the loans. Then you now share the realizable value of the building used as collateral for the loan of 1,000 Naira. 
So now this is building. The book value of the building is 1,560. And the realizable value is 1,100. And the value of the loans is 1,000. See the realizable value of 1,100 exceed the value of the loan of 1,000. That's to show that the loan is fully secured. Back over draft. Now let's go through the additional information. Of the payables, 360 are preferential. That means we have preferential creditors. We've identified one of our creditors to be fully secured. Another one, preferential. The back of draft has no security. That means, since it doesn't have any security, that means it's an unsecured creditors. We've identified fully secured, preferential, and unsecured creditors. Now, let's have our creditors. The first one, unsecured, unsecured creditors. We have preferential, preferential creditors. We have fully secured creditors. We have the total, total. The amount is in naira. Now. Our liabilities, we have payables. So let's list out all the liabilities we have. The first one is payables, 2,300. Payables, 2,300. Then the second one is bank overdraft, 520. Bank overdraft, 520. 20. The third one is loans secured by mortgage or building. We have loan. Loan. 1,000. The loan was secured on building. That means building was used as collateral. Then the next one is capital. So these are the liabilities we have. Now, let's check the additional information. Of the payables, 360 are preferential. Of the payables, you were told that these payables, 360, are preferential. Now, that means the preferential is 360 from the payables. If 360 are preferential, by the time you subtract 360 from 2,300, 2,300 minus 360, then you'll be left with 1,940. The remaining 1,940 1, will be ranked as unsecured creditors, unsecured creditors. Now, let's proceed. The bank overdraft has no security. Since bank overdraft doesn't have any security, that means bank overdraft is unsecured creditors. So, the 520, you put it under unsecured creditors. Then you are left with the loan. We are told that Low secured by mortgage or building. That means building was used as collateral for the loans. And we said the realizable value of the building used as collateral is 1,100, which exceeds the loans of 1,000. I'm told you that where the value of the security is greater than or equal to the value of the liabilities or loans, that, that shows that the loan is fully secured. So that means the 1,000 is fully secured. Secure. So we put that under fully secured. So we sum it up. So fully secure creditor we have one thousand. Preferential creditors we have three sixty. Then if you sum up this, one thousand nine forty plus five twenty zero six fourteen two thousand four sixty. So the total of the liabilities now, if you add. That is 3,820. 3,820. Now, you can prepare the statement of affairs. This question is obtained from the study text of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria. Now, we have Mr. Felele. The name of the bankrupt is Mr. Felele. Now, let's have Mr. Felele. Statement 
of affairs. So we want to prepare statement of affairs for Mr. Felele. You have the book value. Book value of the asset. Now estimated to realize. That is the realizable value. Estimated to realize. The realizable value of the asset. Then we also have liability. Estimated or expected. Expected to rank. Then we also have gross liability. The amount in Naira. Now, I've told you that the first liability you are going to start with is unsecured creditors. Unsecured creditors. From the analysis of creditors, we have the unsecured creditors to be 2,000 unsecured creditors, 2,460. 2,460. You are going to rank it, expected to rank. You put it under expected to rank, 2,460. Then you also put the same amount under gross liability, 2,460. After Unsecured creditors, the next one is fully secured. Fully secured creditors. Then you have realizable value of collateral or security. Realizable value of security. You know, this fully secured creditors of 1,000 Naira was mortgage on building. I will say the realizable value of the building is 1,100. So if the realizable value of the building is 1,100 and the value of the loans is 1,000, the 1,000, that is our fully secure creditors here, 1,000. So that means you'll be having a surplus in the hands of fully secured creditors of 1,100 minus 1,000. That will give us 100. You have the surplus of 100. So the liability of 1,000, you also put it under gross liability. We've considered fully secured and unsecured creditors. Then the next one is preferential creditors. Preferential creditors. The preferential creditors amounted to 360. Preferential creditors, that is 360. You only state it here. You don't need to rank it. You don't need to rank it with unsecured creditors. So you also put it under gross liability. Then, having considered all the liabilities, the next thing is the asset. I'll tell you that the assets that will be used are those assets that are not used as security for any debt or loans. Assets not used as security is what we are going to consider. Now, let's go to the asset. Asset side. So we have cash 25. It is the realizable value. The, we have cash of 25, book value and the realizable value. So cash. Book value is 25. The realizable value is also 25. Then we have receivables. The book value is 1,500, while the realizable value is 1,200. So receivables was not used as collateral. Receivables, 1,500 and 1,000. 200 for book value and realizable value respectively. Then we have buildings. Sorry, we have inventories. 
Inventories is 410 and 300 for book value and relative book value. Inventories, inventories, 410 and the relative book value is 300. We have considered cash. Remember, building has been used as collateral for the loans. It has been used as the mortgage for the loan of 1000 So the building will not need to be considered. Then we have the Goodwill, 520. Goodwill, the book value is 520, but the realizable value of Goodwill is name. So that is why I put 520 and dash. Then we have patent, 12230. Patent, patent was not used as security. We have 100 and 230. The only asset used as security for loans among the list of the assets is the building. That is why building was not considered here. So, you now sum it up. What is the total of all those assets? What, 25 plus 1,200 plus 300 plus 230. That is totaled 1,755. Then the next thing. Remember, building was used as collateral for loans of 1,000. And the realizable value of the building was given to be 1,100. And the loans is 1,000. That means we have a surplus of 100. That surplus will be considered here. Surplus in hands of fully secured creditors. The surplus of 100. The surplus of 100 will be considered. So that is 100. If you add the 100, you have 1,755. 1,750. 1,855. 1,855. The next thing is the preferential creditors. You know, the preferential creditors of 360 was only stated here. So you are going to deduct it here. So we have preferential Preferring share creditors. Our preferential creditors amounted to 360. So you deduct the 360. After us, if you subtract 360 from 1855, then you'll be left with 1495. 1495. Now, you know, the credit side, the right hand side, you have 1,495. And the total of the liability at the, at the left hand side, we have 2,460. 2,460. So now, let's have the 2,460 here. 2,460. That is the total of the liabilities. Which exceeds the total of the credit side. The balance you have at the credit side, the right hand side, of 1,495. So you now subtract... 1,495 from 2,460. The difference is the deficiency as per the statement of affairs. So that is our initial deficiency. That is the difference between 2,460 and 1,495. Now let's do that. So we have the difference to be 965. 965. So when you add the 965, 965. When you add it to 1495, then you have the total to be 2460. 2460. That is all about our statement of affairs. So the next thing is to prepare the deficiency account. Deficiency account. So deficiency 
I can't. Remember, I've told you that in, there are two sides to deficiency in account. The left hand side, you have items reducing deficiency. Items reducing deficiency. I've told you that profit usually leads to reduction in deficiency. While the right hand side, you have items contributing. To deficiency. Now, let's go through the footnotes to identify those items that will lead to reduction in deficiency and those items that will contribute to deficiency. Of the Pebbles, Pebbles 360, Pebbles is elaborating. Preferential. 360 are preferential. We are told that 360 of the payables are preferential. That is liability. The bank of Adra has no security. Bank of Adra is also a liability. The capital of Mr. Felele three years ago was 1,000 naira. Capital will lead to reduction in deficiency. Now, let's have capital. Capital. Then we have 1,000 naira. His losses for the last two years being 705. So there was an accumulation of loss two years ago, 705. 705 losses will contribute to deficiency. Now, trading losses. Trading losses. 705. I've told you that it is this loss that have led to the reduction in the capital. It is the loss that led to the erosion of capital from 1,000 to 295. If you look at the capital, we have 295. The 295 is the difference between 1,000 and 705. If you choose to record the 295 here, then you will not need to record this loss. But since I have recorded the 1,000, then I will need to record 705. No, 1,000 minus 705, that gives you 295. Now, his losses for the last two years being 705, that has been considered. And the profit for the year amounts to 700 naira. Profit will also lead to reduction in deficiency. Profit for the year. We have that to be 700, 700. His drawings over the period of three years amounted to 700. Drawings will lead to increase in deficiency. Drawings contribute to deficiency. So we have it here. Drawings. That is 700 as well. Now, let's check your assets. Your receivables. The book value was 1,000. The realizable value. Is 1,200. The realizable value is lower than the book value. That means that we, we have a loss of 300. Losses from losses from assets. I said assets. There have been a loss from assets where the realizable value of asset of an asset is lesser than the book value. So we have receivables. Receivables. That is the difference between 1,500 and 1,200. That gives us 300. Losses of 300. It is a lot because the realizable value is lower. No, the realizable value is 1,200 and the book value is 1,500. Since the realizable value is lower than the book value, that means there is a loss. Then we have inventories. The book value is 410. The realizable value is 300. There is also a loss on inventory. Inventories four ten minus three hundred. Then we have one ten. Cash. The book value and the realizable value are the same. Building. The book value is one thousand five sixty and the realizable value is one thousand one hundred. There is also a loss on building. 
1,560 is the book value. The relative value is 1,100. Losses of 460. You have loss of 460 of building. Goodwill. The, relative, the book value is 520. The relative value is name. So, goodwill. 520 minus 0. That will still be 520. The loss of 520. Then we have patent. For patent, the book value is 100. The relative book value is 230. The relative book value of patent is greater than the book value. So, in this case, there is a profit. Profit from realization of the asset. Profit on asset or from assets. Assets. Then we have patent. The book value is 100. The realizable value is 230. Then we have a profit of 130. All assets have been considered. All assets have been considered. Then, if you go through your statement of affairs, you have the efficiency of 965. I manage this place to contain it. 965. You have the efficiency of 965. So you have the efficiency as per statement of affairs. 965. So you now add the left hand side and the right hand side. Now let's have the total. 1,700 plus 1,000 plus 700 plus 130 plus 965. That is total 2795. 27, 2795. Let us also sum up the right hand side. We have 705 plus 700 plus 300 plus 110 plus 460 plus 520. So when you sum up all this, the total is 2795. That is the deficiency account. That is all about this question. So the next part, I will consider the bankruptcy of partnership as well as the liquidation account. Liquidation account shall be considered. I want you to know that liquidation is for company. Why bankruptcy is for an individual or partnership business. So liquidation is for company. Liquidation account will be considered in separate video. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Easy come.